Hello there. Just how good was the British Army in World War I? Listen, do you know when I'm glad I wasn't alive? Britain during the Great War. I am 99% sure I would have been white-feathered or conscripted and yeeted into the Somme before I could even blink. However, even though I desperately do not want to be in the trenches, I do love me some World War I. Massive strategies, huge artillery, and the first tank. The Great War Redux mod is a great way to enjoy some World War I action for Hoi 4, but it lacks something... special. And that is massive amounts of historical nerdery. I'm going to play as the glorious British Empire and win World War I using only entirely historical division organization, presets, and historical battle plans as well. I'm coming for you, Gallipoli. I've got loads more of these historical presets videos coming soon. And also, we recently hit 25,000 subscribers, a goal I never thought I'd reach, so thank you so much for all those who chose to subscribe. And to celebrate, I thought I'd set an even more stupid goal of hitting 32k subs by April 1st, which is my age by my birthday. So if you'd like to help out and to get even more historical nerdery videos, you should like the video and subscribe. Right, here we are, the United Kingdom. We have a very small army and a very massive navy and a pretty precarious political situation. We've got a very decent focus tree with some nice alt history options. Though of course we will be paying attention to just the historical ones. But the best focus is right here. Iron Cavalry, look at that, tanks, yes! We've also got the cool British planes to look forward to, like the, the British Sopworth and the, the Vickers, the Martin side, remember that? No? Well, it's cool. First up though, just gotta set up our economy. We're gonna be going pretty heavily into civs and doing some standard eco research and preparing for our lovely British Expeditionary Force. Speaking of which, this is the infantry division template that we start with. It is absolutely bloody massive, way too big, though relatively accurate when it comes to manpower, but not at all when it comes to artillery. This has literally double the amount of artillery it should have. But we'll come back to this in 1914 and do all the history when it's time to make our proper division. This is what our mills are going to look like. A few howitzers, because we'll need them later. Also, quick tip, remember to assign your military industrial organizations to the equipment you start with, because they don't start with the MIOs assigned. And because you probably won't be changing away from these for years, you'll lose out on tons of funding for them. I'm also going to be training up infantry divisions just the whole time. But we also do need to think about Africa. In the last video I did of this as Germany, I totally ignored the Schutztruppe, whom were the troops Germany used to defend East Africa. Well, not so this time. I've done my research and I have discovered that the majority of forces that were assigned by Britain into Africa were actually of Indian origin. So I will be copying over one of the templates from the British Raj and recruiting them. It's not going to be as strong, but hey, I'm trying to be accurate here. Plus, it saves on manpower. Oh, wow, look at that. We get a specific event message from the British dev. Ah, well, thank you, Undead Unicorn. We appreciate you. I'm afraid it doesn't top the most vital first event ever, however. King gets in plane. More news at 11. I realize that I'm mostly just building early dreadnought holes for my battleships, and I actually do have a 1910, so let's, let's build that. I got some spare dockyards. I will need some naval XP first, so let's just pick this ginormous chunk of a home fleet and just click exercise to get some XP. And now we get our very first presets, the 1910 heavy ship. There are two of them and they're identical. <laughs> okay. Considering this is 1910, it makes sense to make the Colossus class battleship and I have to sort of approximate it myself, which means actually turning down the engine so it keeps the correct horsepower and add some guns so that I have the correct five 12 inch guns. It's supposed to have a torpedo tube, but I can't add that to a battleship, so that's it. I will call it the wonderful name of Canadian Kerbal, after our most recent patron. Thanks, Kerbal. Ooh, the Portuguese Revolution has occurred, which means we finally have enough world tension to actually start going down our diplomatic focus tree and fixing our horrendous political situation. Hey, look at that. Canadian Kerbal is here and he wants some more ships. Here you go. Have, have two light cruisers, I, I guess. Oh, they do actually pop out and become Canadian as well. Look at them go. Ah, uh, have fun, guys. Off to Canada with you. Oh, like every British person, I completely forgot about the Irish. Uh, at least I can fix my broken parliament with the Parliament Act. It actually costs me political power, but then I can get more political power per day. We also have the Agadir Crisis. I'm pretty sure Britain did send a battleship to, like, fend our interests. So we will send it and let's see what happens. Oh. Get your popcorn. Oh, baby. Uh, no, never mind. It's been averted. That's fine. I don't want to start anything early. I'm trying to be historical here, remember? We'll just calmly keep going down our political path with some old age pensions and get some more pee-pee. 
Wow, 0.08 PP per day. Hope you enjoy that, old people. There's the Italo-Turkish War to be followed a little bit later by the First Balkan War, neither of which I can participate in whatsoever. I just sort of watch it from Malta, sipping tea and drinking gin. Our very first little bit of PP for the entire game, I'm going to spend it on going early Moby. I just, I need to get out of civilian, man, it hurts so bad. And another diplomatic crisis, we've got the Berlin-Baghdad Railway. I remember this. I'm pretty sure I have to provoke them because then they back down and I get some... Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Political power for free. This is an absolutely unhinged event. A feminist hatchet attack. Suffragette radical Mary Lay has tried to throw a hatchet at the Prime Minister. The historical option is that she misses and hits an Irish national politician, wounding him, but I can actually select that it kills the PM and gives us David Lloyd George. This would be massively better because Asquith sucks, man. I'm sorry. But no, we're being historical, damn it. I've also completely run out of space to build factories in the UK. I think I have overbuilt on civvies. But it's okay, we'll just build elsewhere. It is now 1913, and you might notice something very interesting. I am already out of manpower. Now you might think to yourself, it's okay, Eldra. Just leave volunteer only and start conscripting. Unfortunately, I can't. Conscription was a very iffy topic in Britain at this time period. There was no conscription in World War I in Britain until January 1916. Before that, it was entirely voluntary. The mod actually does have a focus, Pro Patria Mori, that does move me to extensive, but I'm not going to be able to take that until 1916 because I'm being historical. So this is all the manpower I'll get until 1916. <laughs> ah. Hey, at least we get hundreds of thousands of Ulsterman volunteering, so... That's pretty cool. This mod has tons of really interesting historical events. I didn't know about this. This is cool. All right, it's finally January 1st, 1914. But before we start designing our beautiful historical infantry division, it's important to think about what the future might hold for these hard-fighting Tommies in the future. What will fighting in the Great War be like? Oh God, now I'm really for it. Here I am, a British soldier on the front lines of the Great War, and I'm being brought up on charges for not shaving my beard. Well, how can High Command ever expect me to keep up with my personal grooming when all I've got is this horrid thing? Oh well, at least it can't get any worse. Oh, what's this? Another order from High Command? I have to shave my balls now with this thing? Life literally could not get any worse here on the Somme River on July 1st, 1916. <sighs> Jawohl! I am German soldier, sitting here in my luxurious trenches, having a great time, yeah? I heard that nasty toffee eater complaining about his orders to commit to uh, better personal grooming, yeah? The German High Command issued the same order. Luckily, my officers care about me. I don't have to use any old stinky razor. No, no. I have the lawnmower 5.0 from the Perfect Package Ultra 5.0 from Manscaped. This is the ultimate electric trimmer for those who care about their more delicate whiskers. Yeah? Featuring an upgraded trimmer blade with beautiful, long, wide, rounded teeth that glide through those pesky hairs in a moment. But here's the best part. The foil blade. No more snicker-snacking trying to get those last little itty-bitty hairs, yeah? It even has a handy dual-temperature LED light for different skin tones. I bet the Brits in their trenches don't even have regular lights. Mein Gott! You can even take it and use it in the shower under running water. Perfect for those long, warm, luxurious showers in the trenches. Not only that, it came with the perfect starter kit to keep my cartofflin safe. The crop suver and crop preserver leave me feeling comfortable all the way through the cold days in the trenches. Of course, I'm nice and toasty here in my well-protected concrete and pillar box trench line. But don't worry, you too can enjoy all of what Manscape has to offer by simply going to manscape.com and entering in my promo code ALDREHIL for 20% off, plus free international shipping and a free gift. Ah, and now off to trim my pickle halber and enjoy a relaxing morning here on the Somme River, July 1st, 1916, where nothing bad can ever happen to me. Oh, what a strange dream. Anyway, the 1914 Infantry Division. This is what we start with. It kind of looks right. It's a square division. It's got a lot of artillery. It seems like a World War I thing. But no. First of all, the Infantry Division of the BEF was actually a triangular division, which means three regiments, or brigades, as they were called. This means this whole line of infantry on the right should be removed. And the artillery is another big problem. 
There were 72 pieces of artillery in the British Infantry Division, funnily enough the exact same as the German Division, but they actually had 54 18-pounder field guns, which were basically just artillery, and 18 4.5-inch howitzers, as well as four massive 60-pounder guns. So to say there's 72 artillery wouldn't be right, because 18 of them were howitzers. So I'm going to have to sort of split the difference, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put support artillery and a regular artillery, as well as a regular howitzer. This gives me exactly 72 pieces of total artillery and 24 pieces of howitzer, which is six too many, but this is the best I can do. We're also going to be adding a cavalry recon squadron because indeed there was a cavalry squadron assigned to each division. And although it pains me, I am not going to change up the infantry battalions here. And this is because this arrangement is near perfect the amount of men that were actually in a British infantry division, which was 18,073. Though I should remove the entirety of the right regiment, the manpower then just not makes sense. This is what we're gonna have to do. Just It's just what it is. I think it's more important to be more accurate for the manpower. And don't worry, it does change again in 1918. In terms of the Indian forces who will be fighting in East Africa, it's basically the Bangalore Brigade that were quite weak. It was just basically a few infantry battalions with support artillery, so that's what we're gonna do. Finally, finally, we have to think about the Territorial Army, the home defense force used in World War I. While originally they were supposed to never have to serve overseas, the British government passed an act that made it so they could voluntarily agree to be shipped overseas, and like 70% of them did. So the Territorial Force was actually basically just a regular infantry division with all the same equipment and organization, but made up of second-rate men, older veterans, and people whom are not quite as good as would be put on the front lines. And then over the course of the war, more and more of them were peeled off from the beachheads of Britain, and instead sent to fight on the Somme River. Sorry, Dad's army. This huge reorganization has also given us tons of artillery, so maybe I'll take some factories off of them. Oh, I also forgot about the Cavalry Division. We actually start with five of them, but they are the Cavalry Brigade. The Cavalry Division was actually made up of basically five of them. <laughs> this is what it looked like. It was a just ginormous pile of cavalry, 16 battalions strong with support artillery and more recon. This is about the right number of manpower for the division as well, about 9,000. We will just have one of them and they will be our little mobile force. Okay, baby, let's go. It's Franz Ferdinand's assassination. No more music from you, Mr. Man. We have to assign our navies now. I've got an absolutely giant home fleet with patrols and escorts. Seriously, look at the battleships. Another smaller one for the Mediterranean and some other destroyers in a separate fleet for protecting, you know, various convoys. Plus some subs if the Germans ever manage to sneak some convoys past me. We are not yet in the conflict, even though it started on the mainland. Historically, we did not join until Belgium was attacked as part of the Schlie even plan so we won't even touch the continent until Belgium is very scared. Little tip for you, make sure you go check your navy to enable automatic split off and also to actually repair. Sometimes the game just randomly tells them to never repair so you lose your entire fleet. There it is, the Germans have invaded Belgium. How dare they ever do this? Let's go BEF, pour over into Belgium, let's get on the line. And we'll also have the African troops that I've stationed all around Germany's borders in Africa to just start pushing and it, it, mm, it looks like there's no Schutztruppe here there's no garrisons in German East Africa oh that's sad you don't get any badass Paul von Leto Vorbeck and his kick-ass defense of Africa oh it's okay though we can also buy rifles from the USA not big deal <laughs> <laughs> We've got the beginnings of our army pouring onto the border, and it doesn't look like there are a lot of Germans. But oh boy, are there a lot of Austro-Hungarian ships. Whoa, we've just sunk loads. It's still only August, but what is going on on the Eastern Front? Russia is kicking ass. Look at that. They've encircled four divisions. Maybe it'll get a little worse for them when the Austro-Hungarians defeat Serbia and can actually put troops on the front. Oh, the Ottomans want some ships that we'd promised them. I believe the historical thing here is that I refused to give them to them because we were pretty sure they'd join the Central Powers. And speaking of, I guess I should probably put some troops on the Ottoman border because I can't actually remember when they actually attack. Only the most vital events are left in this mod. James Grierson has died. Fat. 
bastard. What? But we can also change our name. I forgot about this. Yeah, we were previously like the House of Saxon Gothberg or something, something very German. So we changed it to Windsor. I say we, the royal family. But I can instead go the House of Tudor or Plantagenet. I would love to do Plantagenet, but unfortunately, I have to be historical. Windsor it is, like the castle. In terms of the actual combat, it's going pretty well. We are piercing them, which means that they have armored company support, I think. And we're pretty good. Our defense is strong, though they are hitting us pretty hard. And more and more troops are coming in from the eastern front. And there are now finally some German forces in East Africa, but only on the port. And I've got them surrounded. They're done. It looks like all of German East Africa just gave up. No Schutztruppen for me. Maybe because they're suffering so badly on the eastern front. Not going much better for their navy either, my god. We can finally get our first little bits of doctrine, though we don't have enough XP to afford trench warfare, the thing that actually gives us all the entrenchment. So we're gonna get pushed pretty easily by the Germans if we don't have enough troops. Oh, massive problem with the Brits, I just realized. I finally got the fort tech. I'm not allowed to build forts on my allies' line. It just won't let me because it's not my territory. So there are no trenches here. <laughs> oh god. Well, I need more troops. Might as well call in every single member of the British Empire. Let's go. Oh, wow. I've been fighting so much that I now have enough XP for trench warfare. Let's go. Now we're just going to hold the line a little bit. I hope we can defend. Oh, my God. The Ottomans have joined. No, that's that feels really early. All right, we'll send the Indian forces that were there fighting in East Africa over to the Ottoman border and just try and hold. I really don't want to lose the Suez Canal. Oh, God. We got a huge breach on the Western Front. What happened to Fortress Verdun? Oh, that's terrible. I didn't even realize that you could connect from Metz to there. Look at that. They, they should be encircled, but they got so many rivers. It's actually really hard to push them out. Even though it looks like we've got them encircled, in a way, they've actually got us encircled because of this horrible little pocket. We have to be really careful and make sure to maintain supply here. Otherwise, goodbye. Several divisions. In the very least, we were able to move the Indian forces to the Ottoman borders quickly enough, and now we're actually pushing quite aggressively. Their troops are not very good. Oh, it's the Christmas trees. Come on, guys, let's have a game of footy and shell struggle. Okay, yeah, okay. So this was a thing that happened to Britain where basically armament contracts were awarded poorly and factories just weren't making enough shells for artillery, so frontline battalions were just not having enough shells, and it caused a massive political crisis that actually resulted in the government falling leading to the very first replacement of a PM during wartime. Hearts in the comments for those who can tell me the other two times that Britain has replaced its PM in wartime. Hint, the second one is kind of a technicality. All right, to beat the shell crisis, I have to have more military factories than 64. Uh, not too bad. Just build a lot of factories, maybe convert some civvies. It's not too bad. I just have to stop building in my puppets and instead build in my homeland and convert civilian factories. The Russians are also starting to get very close to Berlin. This is concerning, but Austria is doing work and also finishing off Serbia, so I'm not really sure what's going to happen there. We're not doing much better, to be honest. They are really crushing that tiny pocket. I think I have to pull my own units back because I just do not want to lose divisions to a terrible encirclement. Progress has seemingly stalled on the Ottoman front, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to commit fully to this historicity, and I'm going to start planning the Dardanelles campaign. That's right, baby. It's Gallipoli time. Let's get some invasions ready to attack into Gallipoli. Looking back at the Eastern Front, the Germans have just completely turned the tide again. They have now massively pushed on the East and even encircled Russian troops. So I don't know what's going on. The Austrians are doing weird things, but Serbia is actually really expanding and doing well. I wonder if they'll just win. There we go. I've done the focus that actually gives us a little goal into Dardanelles and some bonus so let's go move everything to a naval invasion support and let's try the attack i'm sending five divisions because this is actually what the gallipoli campaign was it was five divisions on to the gallipoli peninsula let's see if it works oh baby it's the first of april 1915 32k subs by 32 anyone oh wait what why are only two divisions involved in this attack i sent five. Oh my god the landing transport tech in this mod limits you to only two divisions. What? That's crazy. <laughs> oh, we're, we're, we're actually winning. We're actually kind of winning. It's super close. Quick look at the Western Front. We did actually manage to push back that little pocket, which is nice, which is good because I really would like a victory here. We've also just invented the fighter plane. Baby, let's go very early. Thanks to some focuses, the Vickers. Though we are, of course, going to actually be calling it after our most recent channel member, Raven Roseman. Thank you, Raven. The Gallipoli attack been going on for ages. Let's stick force attack on. It is so close. 
Yes. Oh, we win. Oh my God. All those battleships giving Naval Nation support did it. We are in there. Let's get the other divisions in and let's try to push something. I also finished the shell crisis by quite literally converting a bunch of my civs to military factories. I built way too many. So no worries there. Oh baby, our forces have arrived in Gallipoli. We are pushing into Constantinople, trying to hold on to the actual port. There are troops in Constantinople, so I can't make too much progress, but come on, this is great. I was going to give a medal to the 75th division for being the first on the beaches, but I have no political power. But it would have been cool to give them the Victoria Cross, don't you think? Ah, I just can't take Constantinople. They're just too tough, but... Oh, no, the port's been taken. Okay, so the troop I'd left on the border and the port, he just ran away to go help out with an encircled soldier, so I've just lost my port. Yeah. <laughs> It's really bad. Okay, he might be moving. Let's just really quickly move our troops back and see if we can crush him, retake the port, do do something, do anything. Come on, come on. This is basically now going to become a real-life Gallipoli. But hey, on the western front, we've actually encircled some German forces in a little bit of a push. We have re-liberated Luxembourg, and we are doing, you know, good stuff. This is nice. We've actually managed to destroy some German divisions. Oh, I'd forgotten about the Dervish state. Apparently I get a revolution if I don't deal with them before I fight the Ottomans. I think this might be what this is. They're actually by Ethiopia. I'm not really sure how they're going to get to me, but uh, I don't know. We'll find out. They're probably going to cause a problem. Oh no, Serbia has completely failed. That is real bad. That's going to put a lot of Austrian soldiers on the Russian front. And good news though, we have a huge breakthrough. Touch it into the Rhine. This is very interesting. It's kind of hard to push back beyond, but we can take little bits here and there. A Gallipoli Bulgaria has joined, but we have regained the port so we can figure out some kind of defensive line and just try to hold. And you know what? Let's move more forces from the Ottoman line down in Egypt and move them up. This is okay. In Gallipoli, there were like 13 or 15 divisions by the end of the campaign. And Italy's joined as well to help liberate. Okay, this is good. This timing works out perfectly. We're also finally getting down our Doctrine Tree and getting more soft attack from artillery, which is vital. And even more vital, we got our very first light bombers. It's beautiful, the Martin side. Though, of course, it's actually going to be called the Martin side Canadian Kerbal after a recent patron. Okay, that was the blessing we need. We have encircled another chunk of German forces on the Western Front in Metz. Look at that. That's like 13 or 14 divisions. Also, in Gallipoli, the Italians have arrived to help. Oh my god, they're here. They're finally here. This will actually mean we don't collapse and die. Just in case, let's plop down some forts everywhere. I really don't want to lose this. On the Western Front, we are just absolutely exploding out. This is fantastic. We are in Germany properly. And over on the Ottoman Front in the South, we're pushing and we've reclaimed, like, Palestine and moving up towards Syria. But we're sort of halted there. And I can't really do anything else when pushing towards Constantinople. The troop numbers are just a bit too much. But they also can't push me. We are, though, completely out of manpower, so I have to cancel the recruitment of some other divisions because we, we need some boys on the line, and I can't fix this until 1916. At least Germany has suffered over a million casualties. I think what we're going to have to do is start shrinking the territorial army that I use to guard the ports. I think the German navy is kaput anyway. What actually happened historically is that these divisions that were meant to be defending Britain were gradually cycled into the front lines and forced to go die on the Somme River. But because my issue is a manpower pool, and that's just the way that Hoy models its manpower, the easiest thing for me is actually just to delete the, some of these divisions. So I'm going to take away all of the guys in Ireland and add their manpower back to the pool, and they will get cycled to the front line. Over on Gallipoli again, let's let's stop trying to take Constantinople. Instead, maybe we should try to destroy Bulgaria. Like, they're kind of weak. If we can push out a little bit, it'll give us some breathing room. It's also finally time to get Iron Cavalry so I can get some tanks. Let's go. Oh, the event. But where the tank? I, I only just considered what a tank even is. Did the French invent it first? Ah, oh, that sucks. Oh, the negative events keep piling on. Army epidemic. This is... Oh, this is terrible. We lose pop, attrition, supply. Oh, this is awful. We really need to try and get down the focus tree a bit and get Lawrence of Arabia. I also really need Perpetua Mori soon for the manpower. But most importantly, I can start research on the tanks. Oh my god, the French have invaded into Varna, north of the Bulgarian line. This is fantastic. But I don't care, because it's tank time, baby. Let's see what they've got for us. There are presets. I'm so excited. And oh, this is interesting. There is the Mark I, the Mark IV female and male, as well as the gun carrier. The gun carrier was basically the first self-propelled gun, and they didn't really make very many of them, so I won't bother about that. But this is weird that I have the Mark I straight away. The Mark IV took a little while to come out. And also, the Mark I was both in male and female. 
female. For those who don't know, uh, male means it comes with a pew pew cannon, and female means it comes with a whole bunch of machine guns pointing in every direction. Considering I have all three of them right here, and it's going to take me a while to actually get some tank divisions out, I think it makes sense to just skip straight to the Mark IV, and I'm going to produce the Mark IV female and male versions in equal numbers. Because that was pretty much what happened. We will name the Mark IV male the Robin DBL, and the Mark IV female the Jared, both after some lovely patrons. Also, some beautiful doctrine. I'm actually going to grab Bite and Hold rather than Defense in Depth this time. Last time as Germany, I really swore off Bite and Hold because the, the plus 15% org reduction went below 25%, which just seems insanely painful, but the leg infantry bonuses that this gives just seem too good to pass up, and considering I'm massively on the offense, I think this is the right move. Okay, so let's talk about tank organization. This was impossible to research for. No one really cares about how tanks were organized on the West in front because there weren't a lot of them. Originally they were sort of like heavy machine gun companies which is weird and they operated quite independently kind of being assigned wherever they were needed but then in 1917 they were reformed into tank battalions. These battalions were made up of four companies each company being made up of four sections of six tanks and not Three. I found a couple different conflicting sources that say three or six, and the reason is because it was actually three of each type of tank. Three male and three female, so thus six tanks per section, 24 per company, and 96 per battalion. Thus, to be able to have an actual operational tank division in this mod, I need to have three heavy tank battalions, precisely what it gave me to begin with. That gives me 120 tanks, which is a bit too many, but I think this is still about the most accurate amount that I could do, and I think it makes the most sense, along with three infantry battalions, because you need the organization. There were also maintenance companies assigned to them, because, oh boy, did these things break down a lot. This is, of course, the 1917 organization, but I won't be able to get the divisions out there and onto the front line until 1917, so I'm just going to do this. And also, because before 1917, there is pretty much no way to make a division that would work in Hoi out of the size of the companies that the tanks were organized in previously, so this is the closest way I can actually you know, have a tank force on the map. I also neglected to mention that in 1916, I think May-ish, the infantry division did actually change for the British Army, but not by much, just a bunch of medium mortars were now assigned to each infantry division, but there is really no way to assign mortars. These were kind of on the company level. Maybe on the battalion, it's like a bunch of 2-inch and greater mortars. I suppose the support artillery that I already have might represent that, but I don't know. So I'm not going to make any specific changes. Oh god, more Irish history. The Dublin Rebellion. I get a malice for a little while, but the main problem is I lose a bunch of cores. This is going to hugely impact my manpower once more. Still many focuses to go until I can get extensive conscription, but we've got the Great Arab Revolt with Lawrence of Arabia. God, I love that movie. And this has popped out a couple powers along the Arabian Peninsula, but they're not very strong. And to be honest, we'd already liberated those areas, so this doesn't help me at all. <laughs> Okay. Oh no, don't worry, it's okay. Everything's fine. The Kingdom of Siam has joined the Entente. The war is won, guys. Oh my god. Maybe actually, yes, the war is basically won. The Battle of Eastern North Sea. Nine German battleships and heavy cruisers have been sunk. That represents a significant portion of the German fleet. Let's go. I was curious about the light tank, so I have researched the basic light tank chassis, but it has no presets, and it has the name of FT-17, but that was a French tank that the British didn't use, so... Okay. Oh no, Kitchener invited to Russia. No, pack your bags, Herbert. I'm sorry. For those who don't know, Kitchener died on his way there, so I have to do it. And Kitchener is my current field marshal. He's so good. And there it is. Bye bye, big mustache man. <laughs> I'll miss you. Oh no, it's okay. Look, the fall of Constantinople. We have liberated it from the evil Ottomans. We will call it Kitchener Topol. Kitchen Tonopol. Kitchenville. The French troops are then immediately abandoning me and going to their own little invasion in Varna. Thanks a lot, guys. When the Lusitania has been sunk, that would normally lead to the US joining, but I haven't actually done the focuses <laughs> that add them to the war, so I don't think they're going to be here yet. So let's just keep pushing against Bulgaria. And we finally do have Propatria Mori. The focus that gives me extensive conscription, and a reference to Dolce Decorum Est by Wilfred Owen, a fantastic poem. 
Oh, okay. I take it back. Uh, the French can carry on with their invasion. They're actually obliterating Bulgaria and doing a ton of work. Oh, God. Look at this. This German division has snaked all the way up through Africa and is just about to take the Suez. What is this? Oh, my God. The AI. I am so impressed. I'll, I'll instantly destroy it, of course. But what the hell is this? It's all on the rail line as well. Oh, we can also now partition the Ottoman Empire as a result of the focus and we can decide what we're going to do with it. We can listen to Lawrence of Arabia, we can allow for a unified Arabian state, or <laughs> Mesopotamia, uh, oil, we must, what, 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 what can I take? <laughs> and just ignore it. While I would love to create a unified Arabian state and try and create some kind of peacefulness, I'm afraid the historical option of just nicking it all is what I must do. Sykes-Picot agreement it is. Sorry, Lawrence. Over here in the Western Front, we've actually done some actual work. We've surrounded Dortmund, and that cavalry division is doing work. We are starting to encircle them. Looks like we scared Austria-Hungary so much that their Emperor Franz Joseph died. F. <laughs> F in the comments for Franz Joseph. Ooh, and the fall of Asquith. In real life, this happened as a result of his mismanaging of the Shell Crisis. But this is brilliant for us because Asquith is terrible. The daily political power gain is painful. Now we can have David Lloyd George and actually have someone competent in charge. Look at his face. Come on, tell me you don't trust him. Look at that smart mustache. On the British Empire celebrates with an Australian invasion of Anatolia. That is amazing. Oh yeah, we're just pushing everywhere now. We are snaking into the Ottomans. They are not long for this world. And we've finally got tanks here. We've trained them up so they are regulars. It's six tank divisions. This is about as many were here, and we are going to begin pushing along the northwestern front, see if we can make a little bit of an exploit, and even though they're a bit low on supply, they cannot be pierced by the German divisions, whom are mostly militia, and we are wrecking them. Look at that, a huge tank breakthrough, the models are massive, that looks so cool, we are just exploding beyond the Rhine. We're going to try and ask the French for control of some of the territories, so I can actually build some railways and supply hubs. Uh, oh. Oh, what? Armistice of Compagnie? That's it? Oh, the Germans surrendered. I thought I had to get to Berlin or something. Wow. Okay, thanks, nerd. I guess I just sit and wait for a little while. I can make the Whippet tank as well, by the way. I got the medium tank chassis. It looks pretty much exactly what I expected. I'm not going to need them, but hey, it's nice to have. All right, the timer ticked down, and there it is. Everyone's at peace. Uh, the borders have been completely restored, though a bunch of countries have popped out from the Ottoman Empire. I have to demobilize my economy, but the Paris Peace Conference will happen in 90 days, so we'll just uh, wait for that. Our sneaky gits, the Germans scuttled their fleet, and the Weimar Republic has popped out. It's, it's, I, I remember this. This 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 was a thing that indeed happened. A Korean provisional government envoy has beseeched us to support him in his independence. Uh, I'm a little uh, a little busy, my dude. This is a bit weird. Uh, we have an election right now, and we can just stay as we are, or we can change it up. And Andrew Bonalaw, the best named political leader ever, takes over. But he didn't take over until 1922. Two elections afterwards. So not really sure what this is about, but. Whatever. Oh, that is so cool. We can honor the Balfour Declaration and release Israel and... Oh, we can play as them. Oh, okay. Let me know in the comments if you think that'd be a good future video. I know I did this with Poland in the last one. I could load back here and play as a released Israel. I wonder if they have some cool focus trees or something. Let me know in the comments. Oh, it's time for nations to pop out. Look at Austria-Hungary. These disgusting borders. Oh, my God. Oh, they're terrible. I hate the shape of them. Ah, the Hungarians have had a Soviet revolution. They are now communist. But in this timeline, Russia never collapsed and didn't have the Soviet revolution. So Hungary is now the only communist or socialist even state in the world. <laughs> they're just going to be completely wrecked. What, did Lenin move to Hungary? What's happening here? All right, here comes the actual peace deal. Oh my god, France took so much territory. What is this? They've gone all the way up to the Rhine. This is like France's natural borders. What is going on? The Ottomans have lost territory to Greece and Italy. Russia has taken Constantinople. We got German East Africa and the French got West Africa. Okay, that... <laughs> That's honestly it. I imagine the, the Japanese also took all those islands and stuff, but like, that's it. All that fighting. Millions dead for nothing. Hilarious. I tell a lie, we got the city of Cologne. 
for some reason. <laughs> well, I guess we can go to Gamescom very easily. I never got to reach 1918, but if I did, I would have made the 1918 British Infantry Division, which actually had pretty much the same change that the German Infantry Division has, whereby they removed like one quarter of the infantry so as to increase the relative amount of artillery in the division. Also, manpower shortages. Oh my god, what? The League of Nations. This gives us a post-war economy that just destroys us. This is this is terrible. This is like the worst eco law I've ever seen. Why? That's a good enough reason as any to call this game completed. We have defeated the Central Powers as Britain with the might of tanks. We didn't even need America. Let's go. And we kept Russia alive. Thank you so very much for watching. I've got a bunch more of these historical divisions and presets videos coming soon. Drop a comment down below with a suggestion for what country you'd like to see me cover next and any challenge video suggestions you think I should do because I'm doing those every other week as well. So like and subscribe to see more of that and I will see you next time. Bye bye